middle school teachers. What is the cringiest thing you've seen a student do? Director of technology here. I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringy moment. Called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways. The other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school. So I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. Bear in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on her browser but not before I see full on. Hardcore. Yayoi Hante. Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red and with visibly trembling hands she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion and the students stare in silence. I casually walked over to her and said, loudly enough for the classroom to hear, let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school guys. Her flush red face contorted with fear suddenly relaxed. Her trembling hand stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes and curiosity. Dude, you saved that poor girl's existence. If people she knew found out about that and she got punished her for it, she would have wanted to die. Valentine's Day and a boy brings a girl a dozen roses. They were both in my homeroom, so I watched this all go down right in front of me. I had literally never seen these two have a conversation before, either. Girl didn't know what to do with roses at 7am so she threw the roses in the trash can literally 20 seconds after it happened and went on her merry way. The boy never found out. I hope he had a rose bush, because otherwise roses are expensive as frick. We had this one kid in our 8th grade class stick his entire hand in a cake that was being passed around for a party. Grab a chunk and started eating it like a Neanderthal. It was chocolate and his face was covered. When he finished his chunk of cake with everyone looking in disgust he then proceeded to lick every finger. It was torture watching. He also ended up being the kid that threatened to blow up the school at the end of the year. If you have any way of contacting said kid, tell him I said he's a C. What kind of twisted human being sticks his hand into a cake? Around the 8th grade dance season, they call it prom. There is a whole lot of cringiness roaming the halls. One popular tactic among the boys was explained to me. We ask the girl to prom, and then we run away so she can't say number. Taps temple. I caught the student on google search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong and my name is very common so I wasn't worried. I sent him home since it was an after school homework club and then went through the rest of the history which included boobs naked women Megan Fox nudes and Megan Fox panties. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what was happening and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Once a friend of mine described his quest as a kid breaking into puberty, trying to figure out pee. He described how he would google boobs and variable equivalents and not getting much. It was honestly the most relatable and funny story ever. He was telling it in spiritual life class. There was always this kid that would go up to guys, shake their hands and deeply sniff their necks. One day a teacher asked why he did this to guys and all he said was if I did it to girls it would be weird. To be fair, the kid had a point. I once offered a boy a My Little Pony color by number sheet, ran out of Super Mario. The boy's response, Mister, I'm not gay, I'm a lesbian, I like girls. Well done. I was demonstrating convection, which included burning some newspaper. One kid piped up with hum, that smells like incest. He meant incense. They were too young to get it, but I nearly died trying not to laugh. Maybe that kid's siblings burn newspaper while they smash. My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade, and since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name in lipstick. Okay, that's odd, 
but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book, plus middle school. Then I see the name, Hun, who is our husband, without missing a beat. R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow threw up on him after having marathon sex with a unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark. Glitter lipstick. Nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself more wine. It's extremely well written gapey featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. The kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. I had a student who would constantly butt into people's conversations, and when they asked him to mind his own business he'd stand up and proclaim nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha <laughs> and he'd laugh while everyone awkwardly stared at him. Another kid literally told me one time that he would just act annoying so that he could impress a certain group of boys. They were not impressed. Comma nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha, <laughs> well, at least he is honest with himself. I had a 6th grader lick a book, he definitely tried to keep it on the DL, so he looked around, made sure no one was looking in his direction, and then licked the book, it was a tongue poke, then a full out lick up the spine of the book. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using powerpoint, so there is a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at a screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation and the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a full folder of pictures of girls from his class he had downloaded from Facebook. That was kinda awkward. This has to be the most genuinely awkward thing I've read in this entire thread. My mom is a middle school English teacher. Once, a student snuck a bar of soap into her class, ate it, and proceeded to run out of the classroom and start vomiting. Apparently, he did it to impress his friends. One of the kids responded to questions like Pikachu. Shame that a good kid is going to look back on those days with absolute horror. Jokes on you. She never let anyone stop her from reaching her dreams. And now she is a Raichu. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years on my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had. 8th grade science class. I asked the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says miss, there's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid drew a dong. I calmly tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say if you have something inappropriate in your book. Please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's dongs in their books. Since they won't shut up about it, I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every. Single. Book. Had a huge dong drawn in it. All 90 something of them. Crudely drawn dongs. Artistic dongs. Squidward freaking Spongebob. You name it. It was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Squidward freaking Spongebob. I am less than 15 comments into this thread and I'm already dying. I taught 4th grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years. She always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame, until there was a line in the bathroom and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash can and peed. 4 or 5 girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her, Sometimes the students telling on each other can be cringy enough. I once confiscated what I first thought was a note being passed in class, but turned out to be a gay fanfic one of my students wrote, pairing two of her classmates. Tweak x Craig. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a freaking bee in the middle of a science lesson. Then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at her wrong. In the dean's office she was so upset that she pretended to faint. Complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale. And then laid on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street, and said, Damn it Jennifer, we're not doing this again so evidently this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. 
When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So, yeah, that was cringy. We get drug seekers who fake seizures a lot. This medic once told me about an adoc who called him over to the doorway after bringing one in and says watch this before saying loud enough for the patient, who was faking a seizure right there. I'm not sure if it's a real seizure because she didn't pee her pants right on cue she pisses herself. I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class we dissected a cow eyeball, the year before us. A student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish hard thing about the size of a peanut M&M. In his next class he stood up and swallowed it in front of everyone. Another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes. Ninja, soldier, etc. And stay in character the whole day. I do not remember the details but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. The eye story actually made me gag. In 6th grade science class, our teacher asked if anyone knew what the arms of an octopus were called and this kid immediately raised his hand and blurted out testicles everyone was laughing including the teacher, who also snorted. His face was so red. Kid wore clothes to school with the price tags sticking out. When asked why I was informed that this was to let everyone know he was wearing new clothes. You should tell them that it doesn't really count unless you staple the sales slip to the front of your shirt. Got another one. A girl masturbated in class using the edge of the seat. Not discreet either as many of her peers had a WTF look on their faces. This girl was sweating hard. Seriously most uncomfortable office meeting and parent conference. I work for a private school. This middle schooler recently started dating another one. The girl decided to come to school in a black leather miniskirt and black leather tank top combo. At recess which I watched because it's a small school. She was dancing all around in front of her boyfriend and hanging of the fence stripper. It was hilarious and so cringy. I had a student from a conservative Muslim family wear white see-through sweatpants with a visible black thong on underneath. She brought the clothes to school and changed in the bathroom before class started. One student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingleberry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she still seemed confused, so she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps. Evidently she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience, and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Now I'm self-consciously thinking of all the things I did that make me want to collapse in upon myself like a dying star. But see this is comforting to me to see how common embarrassing crap is in middle schools. Makes me feel better about my own embarrassments. Oh I just thought about another. They were talking about dank memes which were about banned class BTW. I was told, Mrs. Confuzzle Deb don't look up dank memes okay. I told them that I had been on the internet since before they were born. I was born into the dankness. I was molded by it. You merely adopted the dankness. By the time you found B, I was already a man. There was a student who had his hands in his pants, moving his hand up and down almost to a rhythm. That was cringy. I just stared at him in the eye till he noticed that I knew, and then he stopped. I had one of those. He wasn't allowed to wear pants or shorts with elastic waistbands after a while. I organized an activity that was sort of like never have I ever, but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say you're in my boat if, and whatever they say that is the same as you, you have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling because she just did and said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified. Since one, that's disgusting too. I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry and three. How the heck do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this, 
I told her that she was to do a favor for me, and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period, and she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damage control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. They believed me, and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind that figured out what happened, and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally get on the phone and inform the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. When I had my period at school I was constantly paranoid about standing up and there being blood all over my chair. It happening while playing some kind of weird musical chairs is like some horrific nightmare. Not sure if this counts. Had a student projectile vomit in the middle of class. This is in middle school. Poor girl sat in the middle of the room. Vomit managed to get into the seats next to, in front of, and behind her own. Somehow. So much buff and so much shame in that little girl. But then she didn't want to go to the office. She just wiped off her mouth and wanted to stay. This student spent an entire semester speaking in a Russian accent for an experiment. No one questioned him. First day back from winter break. He is back to talking normal. We were all incredibly confused and his parents ended up going to the superintendent about our school allowing bullying. A Korean guy at my high school randomly started talking in a British accent around junior year and kept it up until graduation. Sometimes he would talk in his normal voice. I teach history and let my students do a powerpoint presentation on the history on anything. Some kid did the history of furries. He came to class wearing his fursuit. I teach high school now. I teach 8th grade. This student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So, one day, he finished his class walk early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out, loud enough for everyone in class to hear, look, girl's name, are you gonna date me or what I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside. I see every other student in the room work through this, from shock to laughter to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. Thanks for asking though, TL. Dr. A kid asked his crush out loudly in front of the class only to be rejected. That's pretty mature rejection for 8th grade. Had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith, like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school crying religious discrimination if you told him otherwise. He would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice but he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days he'd wear an all denim outfit with high waters and denim vest over a denim shirt. I had him for science so he'd blurt out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with a periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico who was also his cousin. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain, something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed that to be the world's one and only truth. After 10 years of middle school, I should had a novel's worth. However, so many years of middle school decimates your brain and as someone else said, middle schoolers are generally cringy most of the time. The kid who wrote Mrs. Sharpnet loves cookies on the board when he sincerely meant to write cookies definitely ranks high up there, though, we all cringed that day. I agree with the desensitization that comes with being a middle school teacher, I've taught 8th grade for 10 years, I really don't have one cringe moment that really stands out. They just become part of normal life in an 8th grade classroom. Sigh. Not a teacher, but in 7th grade biology we dissected rats, and the teacher warned that they might be juicy from preservatives, so I grabbed my dead rat, turned it over in the air and shouted you gotta squeeze the pudding out of it my lab mate fainted as brown juices poured onto the table. I am now an adult biologist who does not do quite the same stuff. Oh my god. I'm just squealed in my bed at 2am. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
walked in bathroom because there was a commotion while my students were in there. This boy has his pants around his ankles, pointing at his junk with both hands, asking all passers-by, who wants to touch? I said, student's name, pull your pants up, while shaking my head, and I walked out. He came out after with a bright red face, saying, Mr. Fingerlingerlinger, I swear I'm not gay no need for a consequence, as he was embarrassed enough. Kids pick their nose and usually eat what they pick while I'm teaching. I think they forget that I can see them while I'm at the front of the class talking. Not a teacher, but I interned with one recently. Apart from the kid who insisted on being called Frisk, Undertale, I guess. But the craze had died down so it was just weird. There was one girl who wore a cat ear headband. De kinda cute. Since they were the metal silhouette type that kids wear. But she paired it with a freaking cat tail. A big, black and white, furry cat tail. I am in high school and know someone exactly like this. She's crazy and smells bad and insists I am her best friend. I hold both grass fear and hatred for this girl. Not a teacher but when I was in school those track pants with snaps down the side were popular. The boys would try to yank the pants off each other during class changes, and they all wore basketball shorts underneath. One day some guy thought it would be funny to rip off a girl's track pants, however she didn't have shorts on. Bright purple undies on show and the look of terror on that boy's face was hilarious. She just ran off and a friend followed with her pants. In high school my brother and I were both in theater. The other kids started a trend of pantsing one another, but one day they tried it on my bro. He was going commando that day for whatever the frick reason and the entire backstage. I was up front building sets, got a view of his pale hairy butt. The trend withered and died that day. I had a student who would sit in the back of the classroom and pretend to masturbate while staring at me. I really did not want to have to get the principal involved for what I understood as extremely poor decision making in an attempt to impress his classmates but two instances was enough. I had to watch him tell his mother what he had done in horror. Just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because this student was placed in an advanced class and chose to not learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well behaved, gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. But when I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor, underneath the other students' desks. Now I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. This student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone, especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Just trying to start a game of night crawlers. Kid in a fedora offering high fives in the hallway, but then dabbing just before the other person's hand made contact. It was supposed to be a prank for a vlog. I had a couple of marker clear fangirls a couple years ago that just gave me the heebie jeebies. Group of about 20 kids that run up and down the halls shouting about memes. One of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with so. Do you know the, insert obscure meme, while making Earth Day posters one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees, there were several I love trees on it, Earth Day was on 4 stroke 22 so he also wrote the first two with a swirl at the end so that it looked like he'd written 4 stroke 20 but it just looked like 4 stroke 202, I probably should keep a list, but they happen so often I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Not a teacher. There was this girl who liked the popular athletic girl. She liked her a little too much. She made a slideshow and presented to the whole class. Felt kinda bad. One of my mother's students took a whole pizza in the box out of her office and just started eating. When told to stop and put it back he licked the rest of the pizza and asked if he could have it. She said no and told him to throw it away. He started arguing that it was better in his stomach than in the trash. My mom was furious. Not a teacher but I had a classmate on a field trip rub mud all over his clothes and body so he could go home. Turns out his mom's car broke down and she couldn't pick him up. He had to wear his muddy clothes for the rest of the trip. One of my best friends ate a couple x lax so she could go home early one day in high school. 
except she had locked her keys in her car, and her dad couldn't pick her up until like 6 that evening. And none of us wanted to give her a ride home while she was pooping her guts out every few minutes. Rachel, if you're reading this, I love you, but this is still one of my favorite stories to tell. What's the worst scandal to happen at your school? My English teacher in the 11th grade was sleeping with the whole girls basketball team in exchange for straight A's. I actually failed English that year but when that made the news my school said I didn't have to go anymore because he wasn't doing the grading properly. Everyone who had his class got a B. One year in exams days they were trying to add a new method to prevent cheating where a man from the administration comes to every class before every exam and collects students phones while sticking a sticker with a number on each phone and giving the same sticker to the student so he can get his phone after school without anyone taking someone else's phone that looks alike or something. This was working at first and a bit preventing cheating until one day some guy sneaked into our high school and came as the man who collects the phones while he wasn't. He stole the whole high school phones and went lol. My middle school banned hugging and hand holding during course changes because it blocked the hall. In protest all the 8th graders stood up and hugged each other during their lunch period. A bunch of students got detention. Made the cover of the Charlotte Observer. Dude, everybody else talking about pedos and murder and your big scandal is a big group hug. A student that was in the grade above me, I was a senior, he had graduated, killed his girlfriend and buried her by the train tracks right behind the school. Freshman year, a junior accused the pay teacher of sexually assaulting her after hours in the locker room. He was put on leave and eventually got off on a technicality. Senior year, there was a freak snowstorm in April, during which the quietest and nicest stoner in our class went missing. A day later they found his car in a ditch, and a week later when the snow melted, they found his body. He'd crashed and, in his presumed high F state, gotten out to walk for help with no coat on. He eventually found a telephone pole and sat down against it to rest and was believed to have frozen to death in the storm. Seeing his mom at her only child's funeral still haunts me. That's really sad. Can't find other words. There was a kid whose girlfriend brought a knife into school and planned to kill herself in the bathroom. He knew her locker combination so he took the knife and hid it in his so she wouldn't do it and wouldn't get busted. Someone snitched on him and he got expelled for having a knife on campus. Whole town was P. A male gym teacher did lend some girls volleyball players. Principal got fired for threatening teachers if they didn't produce enough A's and driving a grade inflation scandal. That and the usual drugs and such. The first kid sounds like a good guy, didn't deserve that at all. Schools can be dumbasses sometimes I guess. Girl A decided to fight girl B in class. Girl A ripped girl B's real hair out, broke her nose, and crippled her. Girl B was sent to the emergency room. Girl A was suspended for 2 weeks. They were both in 7th grade. When I was in 5th grade, the male teacher I'd had in 4th grade was fired for helping a high school cheerleader undress. Looking back, he was a creeper. That's quite a big step up. A kid in my senior year short story class, who sat directly behind me, was charged with the stabbing, beheading and burning of one of his friend's drug dealer. I remember the day like it was yesterday, sitting in my short story class when my teacher came in, in tears because she just heard the news. Students didn't find out about it until later. I actually have a friend who testified in his trial because he purchased the murdering materials at the hardware store she worked at. Crazy. Man. We had a computer teacher football assistant coach who was just blasted all day, had so many DUIs he had to get rides to work, but was the cousin of the superintendent so he kept his job. Let's just say that when he crashed a student's car in the parking lot because he convinced them to let him borrow it that that was the beginning of the end of it. It was a small town. The scandal is that the super tried to cover it up by trying to convince the kid to take the heat for it. To no one's surprise, the kid was not convinced. They let him stay on a super for another two years. I would have taken a huge bribe, then reported them for both. This happened between my sister and brother graduating. So it would have been 1996 or 1997. 
The HS AG teacher started dating a student at some point. Everyone knew about it and the parents consented. Our HS was, and is, small enough to still participate in senior trips, and the AG teacher went along as a chaperone when his GF was a senior. They shared a hotel room, when I believe the student was still technically a 17 year old minor. At the time I remember my parents being rather put off by it, but they still hired the guy as a summer farmhand. I don't remember if he was fired or stepped down, but by the time I made it to HS we had a different ag teacher. They got married and had a child, divorced maybe 5 or 10 years ago. Their kid goes to our HS now. I don't know why it wasn't a huge deal at the time, but no one really raised a stink or threatened to call the authorities. Today it feels like a case of grooming by a predatory farm boy. Of course, in many states 16 is the age of consent. But, almost everywhere, as far as I'm aware, has laws that state people in positions of authority, teachers, coach, policemen, clergy, etc., cannot do anything to those under their care, an abuse of authority equivalent to forcing someone. The caretaker killed two local girls and hid them in the school. He tried using the clay kiln to burn them. He later dumped them a few miles away. Some highlights. 1. The chorus teacher got caught looking at Lolita P on his school computer. 2. This kid had nudes of his ex that his friend sent to a bunch of people in school, but he was 18 and she was 14 or 15. So he got expelled and I believe he was charged with distributing child pornography. We had a whole assembly because of it where the cops came and told us they could see everything on our phones. 3. A kid in my grade and another girl, same girl as in the story above, actually, had sex in the bathroom. I learned about it from my band teacher. Band teacher spreading rumors FFS. In middle school, 8th grade early 2000s, one of the hot girls sent a couple nude pictures to her BF and it wasn't long until half the school had them. Police ended up becoming involved to make sure any all copies were destroyed. In high school there was a little scandal involving the teachers and a teachers club called the Hot Tub Club. Faculty members that had hot tubs would host a weekly hot tub party with other hot tub owners. Turns out they were all getting wasted and having a swinging party every Wednesday. Somebody's spouse found out about it and there was a huge exodus of hot tub teachers my senior year. Kid made a chlorine bomb and threw it in the trash can at lunch. Lockdown. Bomb squad. Every single kid and faculty member out on the field in 95 degrees weather for 2 plus hours until parents could show up to pick up their kids. What the frick is wrong with people? A teacher had an affair with the students. She was arrested and released on bail. Then a few days later she sent an email to other teachers saying it wasn't an affair but that she was actually being raped by the students and blackmailed. She even attached screenshots of texts. Later that day, she murdered her husband and committed suicide. Holy fuck that's a sad and wild story. First week of high school. Pay class. The first section was swim. Wasn't my class, but the class after. This kid was playing a game with his friends in the water, who could hold their breath the longest. He was going up for air and hit head on the pointy part of the gutter, and never made it to the surface. Friends didn't notice teacher didn't notice. Eventually football players coming back to the locker rooms noticed. He ended up dying. Teacher was fired although I wouldn't fully blame him as he was attending and teaching kids who didn't know how to swim or weren't strong swimmers. One adult for over 60 kids? That's the school's fault. I was in 4th or 5th grade and someone sketched in the middle school bathroom not to go on school Friday or I will bang bang. This was then brought to the attention of the county and state police and we didn't have school that day and the police searched everyone's lockers for a firearm. Probably the time a girl gave a guy a BJ in the bathroom. The guy filmed it and sent it to his friend. His friend sent all around the school. Eventually the police had to get involved because the one guy was guilty of distribution of child pornography. Had something similar happen at my school but since it was a private catholic school the girl was brought in front of the whole school board for essentially a trial and was expelled. The boys didn't even get detention. Our football defense coordinator molested raped a large number of young boys of a long period of time and no one did a thing about it. My department led allowed the baseball team to line up and she gave them all BJs. Happened years ago and confirmed by veteran co-workers I knew. 
Recently, some of the boys that graduated years ago decided to inform the proper authorities, but she was transferred to another school, still works in the district. How has she got a job FFS? My graphics teacher was married to my maths teacher, and one night he killed her during a domestic dispute. She was apparently having an affair and started taunting him about it in an argument while waving a fire poker at him, he grabbed it off her, hit her over the head and killed her. He was sent to prison for manslaughter, not murder as the court accepted there was no premeditation. My mum was also a teacher at the school and friends with both of them so it had a big impact on my family as well as the school. That's just sad for everyone involved. A girl in my middle school was telling people she had a hit list of people she was going to kill. Got caught with the list, and was sent to a hospital for a while. She came back a few years later in high school. History teacher disappeared in the night with the French teacher's wife and the other French teacher made national news for sexually abusing boys. Well, French is the language of love. A overachieving student in my year went nuts and pooped in a bag in a teacher's classroom. She also thought she could run up trees. Turns out she didn't end up skipping a few years and going to uni early like she was predicted to do. The balance of genius is on a very thin edge. Had a strict dress code that if the girls broke had to change into clothes provided by the school. Turns out vice principal had a camera going in the dressing room. This kid was taking his GCSEs, important exams in England until you get older and realize they mean frick all. Whilst at an exam some kids got onto his phone, went onto his notes and found a 4000 word document consisting of his sexual fantasies with other girls in his year. Clearly paid attention in English as there was some clever wordplay egg, comparing his dong to some world famous landmarks. The screenshots found their way into a lot of group chats, there were about 20 odd screenshots, to put into context how long it was, and it basically acted as a vag repellent for the rest of his time at the school. Important exams in England until you get older and realize they mean frick all. Perfectly defined. Back in high school, the entire football team was almost expelled because one girl gave BJs to every single one of the players in the locker rooms. Supposedly they were all in a circle and the girl was just going around to each person. The kicker, the girl's brother was on the team, and he let it happen. My high school guidance counselor fricked a science teacher's wife and everyone knew about it. They got a divorce. Both teachers still work at the same school to this day, and students will never ever let it go. The story has been handed down from year to year. Kids are brutal. During middle school a few kids sold weed and someone that bought some smoked it in the building which was just stupid. The kid that sold it to him didn't want to get in trouble so he pulled the fire alarm so people wouldn't find the kid. We all got to go home afterwards. D Honestly, that's some pretty quick thinking. Obviously not very responsible, but the kid that pulled the fire alarm had some pretty sharp self-preservation instincts. Long story short the principal got arrested for hiding cameras in the bathroom this was back in elementary he was a total freaking creep. What a frick shocked at how many pedo stories there are. The Harlem Shake was a craze. We had an Ray teacher who desperately enjoyed being the popular teacher so he got in on the craze. Invited 40 pupils from my year to his classroom at lunch and filmed his own Harlem Shake video, which in itself wouldn't have been against safeguarding rules. Thing is, he also taught sex ed, so everyone got into his cupboard before the start of the video for props. The video was essentially a group of 14 year olds throwing dildos and condoms around the room while he, of his own accord, grinded on a life size cut out of the poop. He was suspended under investigation for half a year but surprisingly kept his job. He was lot more professional when he returned. While he, of his own accord, grinded on a life size cut out of the poop. When you Sinead O'Connor yourself. A girl died in the pool during an event at the school. The swim teacher was blamed and was prosecuted. The girl who died was at my sister's class. Both were 7 at the time. That happened over 10 years ago. But the parents haven't had another child since. She was their only kid. That's horrible. Poor people. A video leaked of a girl fricking herself with a spatula. We called her spatula girl. Funny at the time. Makes me feel bad now. A guy in year 10 made a statement that the more compact a group of people are, 
the higher the death toll would be in a shooting and we were genuinely talking about shootings and somehow people mistook it that he was gonna do it. It was a joke and everyone was playing along at first. Cut to 11 months later. He was in year 11. The whole school knows. Rumors got out. The truth was beyond freaking twisted and changed to something different. Kids were actually scared to come in. Parents were pee. Teachers were anxious. They had to search the kid. They kicked him out 9 days before he finished for good. Was still allowed to do exams but had to do separately from everyone else. The police were involved and it made the news but the news article is complete fake and bulls. He also wasn't allowed to prom. This was around 4-5 years ago. He told me he was doing a lot better now. He went to a better school for 6th form. He says whilst he has moved on with his life, he will never forgive the bastards. Also we live in England and guns are much harder to get especially to the average person who knows nothing about how to get guns. That's freaking horrible poor lad, glad he moved somewhere better. Some dude with a tiny little pecker sent a picture of it, unsolicited, to a girl, and she sent it to all his friends. Wasn't long before like half the school had seen it. Wasn't long, I see what you did there. 3 come to mind. 1. Principal of the HS and director of athletics got caught embezzling money from the school to their bank accounts. They got caught after 50k went missing from the school's bank. 2. Bomb threat. Got sethrichd whenever we went in. Metal detectors. Bomb dogs. The works. 3. Couple kids invited an African American into their Twitter group called Golf Enners and were saying stuff like repeal the 13th to her. She tracked down the school and made a complaint. Made local news. My former high school got on the news for having a history teacher lie for 4 years about being a decorated war hero. Guy claimed to have not one, but two purple hearts, among other things, and never even served a day in the military. But it gets juicier. The truth came out because his ex-wife exposed him, sending evidence he was making it all up to local news stations in the school. Why'd she do it the history teacher was having an affair with another teacher in my school. We had a lot of weird teachers at my school, but I think this story shows just how much the administration hardly vetted teachers, like holy crap. We also had a guidance counselor get the boot for being a racist, but that's another story that didn't get as much publicity. A girl gave a guy a BJ behind a building, her braces got stuck on his dong, he pulls back, dong bleeding punches her in the mouth. She goes and tells the principal. Parents get called in. He yells she cut my dong while the door was open. Everyone knew then. We had a few. Some standouts. Student hid a pregnancy from her parents. She ended up giving birth at home and killed the baby. Teacher sexually harassed students. Students engage in sexual acts at the nearby church, where all our masses occurred, and we... The student body were then banned for having our masses at the church. When in middle school, the school forced us to give our phones to the vice principal, and they would stay there locked during the day. They got stolen, around 120 smartphones. This locking up can backfire. One year we got together and all agreed to set an alarm on our phones for the same time, at max volume. After that they just said the phones had to be turned off, though. When I was in 3rd grade I believe, one of the principals at my school got arrested for disability fraud or something like that. Then when I was in the 7th grade, one of the teachers got arrested for being a PRphile. Seems like a common theme in this comment section lol. Physical education teacher hit the principal on the head because he protested the students being treated roughly during sports class. I think the principal might have had a decent point there. My religion teacher was relocated after rumors spread that he sexually harassed a female student and hit a male student. I never found out if those rumors were true but I mean there had to be something because teachers don't just get relocated in the middle of a school year. He was in but, I wouldn't put it past him. In Germany it's super hard to get fired as a teacher. I think you'd need a prison sentence to actually get fired. That's why he was only relocated. Here I was thinking the guy hacking a teachers around and receiving exam answers was a big deal. This thread proved otherwise. There was this guy in high school, pretty shy, didn't have too many friends, was always trying to fit in, kind of a poser but in an insecure way. I'll call him pumpkin pie for privacy reasons. So one day pumpkin pie had the genius idea to impress his class and make them like him more. 
to get the Chem Geography teacher and retrieve the exam question from his school account. He used a USB stick with a program on it that retrieved saved passwords from most browsers. Chrome, i.e., Edge wasn't a thing yet, Firefox, etc. He waited for the perfect moment to plug it in, the teacher was taking a quick bathroom break. The whole class saw it and he made up some excuse. Don't remember what he said. Everyone kind of forgot about it. He checked the teacher's school account every day for a couple months. Until finally the teacher uploaded the exam questions. Pumpkin Pie downloaded the exams. Then. And this is where he freaked up. He gave them to people in his class that he liked. Those people started talking. And eventually people from other classes started asking Pumpkin Pie if he could get the answers for their class too. So then exams came round. He asked his classmates not to make it too obvious that they knew all the answers. Of course, they did. They all had way higher grading than usual. One day he received a call from the school, which never happened before. Basically they said hi pumpkin pie, you need to come to the school and talk to the principal right now. He asked why, and then his heart dropped as she said because it looks like you committed fraud. Apparently they saw the discrepancy in the grades and went looking in the logs of the teacher's account access and found that it was accessed from an IP address which Pumpkin Pie also logged in from. Dumb sucker didn't even use a VPN. Then he realized how much he had freaked up. See, he had just turned 18, which meant that he would be treated as an adult should the police ever get involved. Anyway. He went to school and had a really hard decision to make. Either the whole class would have to redo the exam, or he gave the names of the people he gave the exams to and only they would have to retake it. He chose the latter, and everyone hated him for it. Him and the classmates involved weren't invited to the graduation ceremony. Oh and the hack teacher was considering pressing charges for privacy violation. Somehow he managed to convince the teacher not to f- he is so freaking lucky. Anyway. He was already insecure and at this point he just could look any of his classmates in the eyes anymore. He ended up moving countries eventually. And now he uses a dumb alias online whenever he talks about it. Something with a pumpkin. Not sure why at this point since it's pretty obvious he's talking about himself. All I had was someone crap in the urinal at my school. And you are absolutely right. Teachers of Reddit. How have you secretly rewarded or punished a student? While making seating charts, thinking, it would be quite a shame if I sat my least favorite kid under the arctic AC blast. Yes I agree, quite a shame. Anyone who comes in late to a full lecture theater at my university gets to sit under the horrible air conditioning. It's on 365 days a year, regardless of if temperatures are less than freezing outside. It's only a little thing but when I'm marking assignments. If I can see that a kid has really tried I'll write them a little note like. Great effort Michael. I can really see your algebra skills developing. You have come a long way since I started teaching you and I know you're going to get a great grade at the end of the year if you keep working this hard. I think there's something really nice about a written note. I do this especially for the quiet kids who might not want me to draw attention to them in class but it's my way of saying I do see you working hard even though you think you are invisible. I have a student this year who makes my life heck. She is blatantly disrespectful, nasty to me and classmates, and thinks I'm her personal waitress. Part of this is that every day she tries to hand me her work when I'm running around the room getting class started, but she does it in this manner that implies I'm her maid. I tell her every day to get up and put it in the turning box like everyone else. She whines until some other classmate does it for her. Thursday she left her extra credit, 2 points on her test, not that much, on her desk like it was my job to go get it after class. I threw it away. I'm not sure this is punishment as much as expecting her to follow directions, but I can't honestly say I would have done the same to other students. Small, petty justice, but I did it nonetheless. I assigned a very high point value project to my HS Chem class. A bright, popular student turned in a half ass effort. I knew she knew that she half-assed it, and I knew she had a conscience, so I handed her my grade book and told her to fill in her own grade. I said whatever you write will be your grade, no questions asked. It was fun watching her squirm for 10 minutes, begging me to make the choice for her. I used to always show up late for my 10th grade science class. One day, we had a little chapter review quiz at the start of class, and naturally, I am a minute or two late. 
So I walk over to my desk, and the teacher hands me my quiz. It's all really advanced questions comprised of polysyllabic biology jargon that I've never seen. Question after question is material that I'm pretty confident we have never ever covered in the class. After about 2 minutes, I look up to see how everyone else is doing on their quiz. Everybody was watching me and when I looked up, they all started laughing. The teacher had printed up a single fake quiz with super complicated biology questions just to frick with whatever kid ended up showing up last to the quiz. Ms. Cohen, you were a fun teacher. Thumbs up. A local music store was going out of business where a lot of students rented band orchestra instruments. I had a student who has a serious lifelong disability, but she still participated in many things and is an outstanding student and person in general. She went through some scary medical things, but never complains, and is so genuinely happy. Her family is blue collar hard working, but I knew her medical expenses were a constant in her family's life. The store was offering a discount. Plus their normal rent to own discount. For students who had instruments to outright purchase them before they closed for good. I contacted them and they let me pay the remaining cost of her instrument and kept my identity a secret. Had a kid who was working a job late into the night in order to help his family while trying to finish his senior year in high school. His dad had been laid off and his mother was disabled, so they were barely making it. He told me that he worked late into the night and he had to miss days of school. 2. He did the best he could in my class but just couldn't pass after missing so much class. He was a senior and a good kid who needed my English class to pass. Figuring that the kid's life was already hard enough, and that his family was struggling enough, I secretly added some points to assignments he hadn't done so that his final grade went from a 50% to a 61%, just enough to pass and graduate. I don't like giving away grades, and I never told him, he just thought he had passed. I've added points to students who were on the cusp of failing or would get letter grade improvements, if they were behaviorally or socially good people. I feel it's worth rewarding people who try hard or have good character as much as it is worth rewarding content. When I am doing final grades if a good student is really close to a higher grade I round it up, if they've misbehaved it stays where it is. I used to play poker and chemistry with my friends. We always seem to lose decks of cards so one of us bought a 4 pack. 5 minutes into our game, our chem teacher noticed and confiscated the deck. But little did he know we had 3 more, until a minute later when he confiscated the second. By the end of the lesson he'd taken all 4 decks. We collected them at the end and went on our way. Cut to next chemistry lesson and we're playing poker again. After 10-15 hands, we realize that no aces have come up. We looked through the deck and only counted 48 cards. Bit of a pain, but we had 4 so we could use the aces from another deck. Except none of those had them too. We looked up at our teacher and he was waving 16 aces at us. He said if we didn't all pass our upcoming test, he would give the cards back to each of us at parents evening with our parents present. I was the student in this case. At the very start of 10th grade, my mother was in a motorcycle accident, where she should have died, ended up in Iku, various hospitals, etc. for over a year. Meanwhile I have arthritis, so I get sick easily, psoriatic, genetic. During the third term, I was sick for a week, on top of already being behind from getting 2 hours a night to work on assignments because I went to visit my mom daily. I go to my European history teacher to explain it, and he immediately dismissed all my missing homework assignments for the term because he knew I was an excellent student who didn't deserve a poor grade for this. His words, not mine. I owe that man my 1B plus from that year, and he's been a major reason that I'm so motivated to do well for the rest of my high school career, along with my mom still being around. If a student can dance on an essay where they obviously have no idea what they're talking about, I'll give them some credit for the attempt. For example, I ask you to discuss three major causes of the French Revolution, causes we covered in class, you don't know them. But, in the essay, you try to extrapolate some possible causes using information you do know or attempt to morph the question into a topic you're prepared to discuss. I call that dancing, because a good performance can be moving, 
and a poor performance is laughable. I've gone as high as 75% credit for a good dance. I am HO. It demonstrates a better mastery of the material than actually parroting back what I've been talking about for the last 4 weeks. On the other hand, if you pull any of that crap that shows up on 9 gag, like give this drawing of some stupid meme an A or whatever, I will burn your butt for the rest of the semester. You so much as emit a semicolon, and it's half credit at best. I teach a high school elective course aka not as important as English or math, and I had a class that was 23 boys and 2 girls. If you are a teacher, you know this is a terrible, terrible setup. Teenage boys are definitely pack animals and are constantly in a struggle to establish their hierarchy especially if females are limited. Anyways, these guys were a constant ball of energy and were always doing stupid, stupid guy stuff. They went through a phase where they cup checked each other. This went on for weeks. Little Johnny in the back would walk up to sharpen his pencil. Bam. Cup check. So one day in class one student, I'll call him Travis, asked to go to the restroom. I gave him the pass and sent him on his way. The rest of the class was quietly working when another boy in the back yelled out oh my god. Travis just texted me a picture of his balls. Now I know how these guys have acted all semester and I also know the zero tolerance mess that school systems deal with. I knew this could end up very, very badly if it was dealt with by administration. Immediately got the kid to delete the text, calm the riotous laughter going on, and somehow managed to get them all back on task. But Travis wasn't back yet and I sure as heck wasn't going to let him smugly get away with this. So I called his mom and had her on hold. Told her that Travis had done something that I did not approve of but I felt it best if he would explain his actions to her instead of me. And on a side note, I teach animal anatomy so terms like testicle, scrotum, etc are common vocabulary. So in walks Travis with this crap eating grin on his face. He thinks he has succeeded until I casually look up from my desk and let him know his mom is on the phone. There in front of the entire class he had to explain that he had just taken a picture of his testicles and sent it via text to his buddy in class. You could literally hear mom screaming through the phone. Once he finished, I spoke with her and told her that I felt the situation would be best handled by her and thanked her for her time. That day, I won. I never fudge grades one way or the other. However, when I know a student has really put in the effort and is genuinely trying, I'm more lenient with due dates, within reason. I'd rather they learn the lesson and be able to apply it later than meet a deadline. I was the student, and the secret kindness was from my guidance counselor, not a teacher. I skipped class a good bit in my senior year, but I was a huge goody two-shoes. It wasn't a rebellion thing, just trying to handle some pretty heavy life circumstances at the time. I never went far, and most of it was just trying to stay afloat in schoolwork. I got caught skipping class one of those times. I was hiding in the school auditorium studying for my math exam later that day while my friend worked in the tech booth. This was the second time I'd been caught skipping that week, and since I was a girl and my friend was a dude, the teachers who caught us were sure we were up to something a little more devious than studying. They made very clear that I was in huge trouble. And that my guidance counselor, who knew me and what was going on in my life quite well, would be called. When she came in, she looked terrifying and told me I would would have to come to her office because this was such a big offense, and told the other teachers that I'd be punished to the fullest extent. I was appropriately shaking in my little goody two-shoes boots, but when we got to her office, she dropped what was apparently just an angry act and quietly told me that I could stay in her office and finish studying for that math exam for the rest of the period, and essentially just kept watch for me the whole time. That moment really stuck with me, and the rest of her kindness throughout all of high school absolutely got me through a few of the crappiest years of my life. Kids who misbehave aren't always frick ups, man great teachers and mentors can keep sight of that and really make a difference. Not a teacher, but a student. I switched majors in college as a junior from business to geography. I had taken all the general ed classes, and I was in a hurry to learn something that would have something to do with some kind of a career. I took all geography classes in one semester, including intro mapping classes and senior level GIS courses. My advisor did bureaucratic magic to get me past prerequisites. I had one professor who taught two of my top level classes. 
I came in with no previous experience in the software we used or any of the general knowledge required for the class. I had my nose to the grindstone and put in more effort than I ever had in college. In 3 weeks my prof had me tutoring other students who weren't doing well in the class. The very first day of class I wrote down the day and time for the final exam. Fast forward to the end of the semester I am sitting at an 88% with complete confidence in my ability to get an A. I show up for the final. And it turns out I wrote down the wrong time for the final. Showing up for it at the end time, not the start. I go to the professor's office to plead my case. Hoping he'll let me take the final. He tells me I won't learn anything from this if he lets me take it. But he knows I put the effort into the class and my final grade will reflect that. Grades come in, and I got a 90% in the class. I needed one of those scientific calculators for a class exam but my family couldn't afford one. My teacher took me to his office and handed me a brand new one in a box. He said I'd appreciate if you didn't tell anyone in class about this. Nearly cried. I was only about 13. I think I gave it back to him like 5 years later as I wouldn't be using it again and told him to pass it on the next kid. Tay Mr. C. I'm usually cool with a student charging their phone in my room, but they have to ask first. If they don't, I try to guess their password till their phone is locked for 12 hours, or better yet, until they have to sign into iTunes again. I'm considering auctioning the seats next to outlets. There's money in that. I'm not a teacher, but this happened to me. Long story short, my jackass father was trying to have me taken away from my mother. He contacted my guidance counselor and I am still not sure what their arrangement was. All I know is that she started pulling me out of class and buying me candy and comic books. And she kept asking me weird questions about my home life. Before too long, she called me to her office and had a stack of 12 comics on her desk. Every Marvel and DC book that came out that week. She told me they were mine. But first I had to talk to a social worker and tell her a few small lies about my home life that would add up to me getting forced to live with my father. I told the social worker what was going on, and she called my mom, gave me the comics, and sent me home for the day. Never saw the guidance counselor again. Whoa, that's fricked up. In third grade my teacher would call me up to her desk and give me a lifesaver when I was being too rowdy and seeing class. I was a hyper kid and sometimes energy got the best of me. It was our understanding that when she did that, I needed to chill a bit. So it wasn't secret to me per se, but the rest of the class was unaware of it. I asked my professor if I could turn in a report by the end of the day instead of during class time, since I wasn't finished. He said it was okay, no problem. He ended up grading harsher than other students and I'm convinced it's because I turned it in late. My feeling while grading is generally, hey, you got extra time, it better be extra good. When I was in 9th grade, I had a principal named Dr. Ridgeway. My life was just a big ball of crap. To be honest, I was bullied, living in an escort motel. It was trashy, that we couldn't afford, and I self-harmed. Dr. Ridgeway went above and beyond for me. She obviously had to get the bullies, and she did. Anytime I felt the urge to self-harm, in school, I was in her office. She would let me sit outside the building and listen to music so I could calm down. And if it got too bad, I was allowed to call mom and go home. No questions asked, the most important thing she did. She asked the people who donated a lot of money to the school, to help pay for us to live in a motel for another week. She did that three times till we got on our feet to live in an apartment. I've never had a teacher school worker mean so much to me. I need to go visit her soon. Not a teacher but an occupational therapist that works in an elementary school. Had a guess how many legacy contests at the end of the year. This kiddo just has a sad life and always tells me how his siblings were happier before he was born. This is a sweet kid. Not a mean bone in his body. Guess who won the legacy? I took a kid's phone and texted his mom saying, I love you, and I think I am old enough for more responsibility. Can I start mowing the lawn, or wash the dishes or something to help you out? The kid was 12, and hates me to this day. I have a little activity called secret compliments that I often do when I'm starting up or taking over a new class. It's a good way to get to know the students and also just try to increase the positivity in the room. 
Well one time I got a bad vibe from a class right away and I could kind of tell that all the other students disliked this one kid. Well I did the secret compliments game anyway, where all of the kids write down nice things about another randomly chosen student and then I read them at the front of the class. Sure enough, the kid who had to write a compliment for the class pariah wrote a nasty message instead of a compliment. I changed it on the spot to a nice compliment without anyone knowing, except the kid who wrote it of course, and I made eye contact with him the whole time I was reading. I also purposefully saved his own compliment for last, to make him sweat a little and wonder if anyone had written anything nice for him, or if I was going to read it. At the end of the class I took him aside and privately told him that he had a new homework assignment. To write 10 nice things about the class pariah and give them to him personally. And that for every other kid he could get to do the same thing. I would give both him and the other kid a candy bar. But not to tell anyone about the candy bars or that I told him to do it. I'm a strong believer in the fake it till you make it school of thought. The next day the class pariah had like 100 nice notes. Which I of course read and checked over first. And I gave a sack full of candy bars. Coffee crisp. I love coffee crisp, to the other guy to distribute. He got to see how much nicer it felt to be nice and became somewhat of a class leader. Maybe he was before I came in, but I like to think I had some positive effect on him. If someone fell asleep in my high school physics class, the teacher would not wake him up, turn the lights off and leave. In my high school our report cards only listed the letter value and not any pluses or minuses. One teacher would announce any and in class after the reports came out. She didn't announce your letter grade, just the and. One term she gave me a minus 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 minus. I had a D. I was struggling in the class and had even gotten some tutoring so she knew I was trying and had given me a little boost by not giving me a failing grade but made it clear I had to push even harder. I managed to improve and passed the class with a B. An F may have made me give up on the class. The year was a rough one right from the beginning. I was teaching 4th grade and within the first week I had 3 or 4 major incidents. Seeing this group needed bonding I found a bicycle repairman who had a bunch of bikes in front of his lawn. I arranged for a bicycle field trip along an old railroad grade that had been paved and paid the $3 each to rent the bikes for the day. The old railroad track had a slight upgrade in it so the kids would have to keep pedaling not getting too far in the distance. So they didn't get too far ahead I positioned an adult in front with me in back. We were dropped off at the beginning of the trail when the bus driver said, I'm not going to be sticking around waiting for you and drove off. Oh well, I had a cell phone. Anyway the kids were anxious to take off so I sent the parent. Only one volunteered. Off. Everybody took off except for one rather large girl who stood there looking rather confused. This girl was the source of a lot of the issues in this class. A princess of the first order and famous for her tantrums. I asked what was wrong. She answered. I don't know how to ride a bike. She wasn't snotty about it but just factual. With the class riding off in the distance I told her how to pedal while I grabbed the center of her handlebars. We both pedaled that 8 miles with me cajoling her. Motivating her all 8 miles. It was at the last mile when she finally got the balance part and finished beside me. I dang near tore my left arm off that day and every time after that when she started in on her princess act I'd hold my left shoulder as if it pained me something fierce. Finally in March or April she would look at me saying Mr. Ah, your shoulder can't be sore anymore it was something we kept between us all year. I taught high school. This one kid was always in trouble. Always on disciplinary probation. Not an ounce of sense. During the last period of the day, the kid walked in with a soda can which was strange because lunch was already over a few hours ago. He was obviously dipping. I knew it and he knew I knew. I picked up the can and acted like I was accidentally about to take a drink. He turned pale. Then I apologized and said, sorry, all yours. Down the hatch and waited for him to guzzle it. He guzzled it. Then asked if he could go to the restroom to retch. Better than being suspended for possessing tobacco. Back in 4th grade I was yelling swear words in class. Little idiot me thought swearing was cool and all that. And got the teacher real mad. He then dragged me to the office and began lecturing me. Half peed off. A few moments in another teacher who liked me asked him if she could take over and handle the problem for him. And so I went with her afterwards. After a simple don't do this again. Okay, 
She let me play RuneScape on her computer for the rest of the period. I also helped her create an account. The kid who sits behind me in high school honors physics class is named Nico. Nice kid. Funny. Sarcastic. Likes to joke and mess with the teachers, but knows when to shut the frick up. Teacher is named Mr. Thompson. Old guy. Late 60s or early 70s and was teaching at this same high school when my dad was a freshman here way back in 1976. We've only been in school 9 weeks and I could fill a thread with stories from this class. Mr. T had already entered my top 3 favorite teachers list after the first class. His philosophy is simple, you respect me, I respect you. We took a test over vectors last week, which required the use of graphing calculators. 10 minutes left in class. And Nico is the last one to finish. Turns in test, goes back to seat, punches a few things in his calculator, then goes, son of a. He sighed loudly, then said, ridden with despair, Mr. T. Already slightly amused, Thompson asked what the problem was. Nico had just realized that he had taken his entire test with his calculator set on the wrong mode. Therefore, all of his answers, it was safe to assume, were wrong. Mr. T took a minute to calm him down, then told Nico that he would grade the tests over the weekend and see what he could do, get the tests back Monday, and come to find out that Mr. T had gone through every problem on Nico's test, following his work on a separate calculator with it set on the same mode as Nico's was during the test, and graded it based on Nico's understanding of how to solve the problems. He still ended up getting a C, but it still shows the level of commitment and respect he has for his students. A student let off a fart bomb in class. I made them sit in the room until they came up with 20 figurative terms to describe the smell. What happened to your school bad boy girl? My biggest bully in middle high school ended up going to prison. Funny thing though, my mom worked in that prison, and they got to know each other. When he got out, he found me and apologized. He later got a job at a local Taco Bell. And whenever I came in he would always add a bunch of free stuff to my order. I haven't seen him in almost two decades. But I know he became a dad. I actually hope he's doing well. Wow that's actually a great ending. He's an eggplant farmer. Literally. Delightfully niche. Shot and killed two fellow students behind a Publix across the road. So now he's in prison. Man even behind a Publix. That's rare af. Drugs. Drugs and brain damage. In middle school there were these twins who were both really cool. They had a band. One did drums while the other sang and played guitar. Skated. Occasionally got in trouble with the law but for really small things. A few months ago I was taking a bus when I saw them get on. They were clearly homeless and one of them kept whining to the other that he needed his fix. He passed out and his brother half-heartedly puked into his hand. Eventually the bus driver saw one of them I crap you not. Stripped down to his boxers to get some non-puke stained clothes on and told them to get the frick off the bus. Told my folks about seeing the twins. Apparently they've been in and out of jail for years. The other guy I did karate with in middle and high school and was a sweet guy who had a bit of a temper and was a bit of a troublemaker. I saw him on the streets. We were both in our mid-twenties but he looked like he was pushing 40. He talked slow. One side of his face trooped even when he smiled and he walked with a limp. I later found out that he was an on and off H addict and had been in enough fights that he was permanently brain damaged. Jeez. Yeah, seeing people like this whenever I step out becomes a reminder for me to not even think about trying all those pills and powders. I'm fairly certain one of the prominent and popular bad girls at my school ended up as a prostitute. A few years after graduation she kept posting about how people should come get massages at this sketchy spa she worked at downtown. She also kept posting about her modeling career, but all the photos were behind a pretty steep paywall, so I'm pretty sure that was P. Anyway, I read in the news one day that this spa she worked at was raided by the cops and the owner was arrested for running a prostitution ring. She suddenly stopped posting after that. Fairly certain. I'm thinking that a jury would find that beyond a reasonable doubt. D. It's funny, in some aspect just about every classmate of mine was a bad kid. Many went on to college or have kids, but many others have struggled. Out of 55, 12 have died. We graduated high school 6 years ago. Alcoholic, 
missing most, all, his teeth, usually in between jobs in either lawn service or pest control, has custody of his kids cause he's the good parent, she's dead, OD right out of high school. I feel like for a lot of bad boys girls, you get to a point where it's like frick it I probably won't live much longer anyways, so you just get worse and worse until you do finally kick it or find a way to get yourself killed. He got arrested for spray painting a wall and happy ending he went back to school and got into uni. Nice to see a happy ending. Two bad boys, both brothers, a few years apart, the younger one started some sort of legitimate business, think Roy from the office, and seems to be doing extremely well, the oldest is literally homeless and constantly begging for money on Facebook, it's really sad, would be weird if only one of them was a brother. He wasn't the quintessential bad boy but did drugs, drank, got arrested for drugs, total partier. Always nice to me and we were friendly but that whole scene just wasn't my thing. That was 1981 and up until 2013 wondered whatever happened to him. Found out my daughter's new boyfriend was his son. I was very relieved to find out that shortly after high school he realized he was going nowhere fast. Cleaned himself up and started a successful business. Thrilled to say that my husband and I share two beautiful grandchildren with he and his wife and I couldn't be more happy about it. That's the best thing I've read in this post. Got a girl pregnant, abused killed the baby, and he's still in prison 12 plus years. He's not the best younger brother, but what can you do? He moved to California and became an ad film director. His Instagram stream regularly contains pics of him posing with topless models, celebs and fancy cars and bikes. He also has a boat, so, he's living up to his childhood image, I say. Man, I can't help but think he's probably exactly the sort of person people talk about when the Me Too movement was in full swing. School bad boy when I was there was my older brother, drug dealer, played in a metal band, general smartass and butthole, he flunked out of college after two semesters and has been waiting tables since then, he turns 30 this year, and the girl he's dating now is the first one who's stayed with him for more than 6 months. She's super cool, actually, but like 5 years younger than him. They have a couple dogs, smoke a lot of weed, and play a lot of DND. Last I heard from him, he was escalating a feud with his neighbor by putting a plate and a half worth of loose, cooked spaghetti in her mailbox. That ending omg ha ha ha. A rumor went round school that he was messing around with a 13 year old at 16. She fell pregnant, he got done for statutory rape, her parents pressed charges and he went to juvenile detention. He married her anyway once she was legally able to get married, although I believe they divorced shortly after, and he became a grandfather at 31, presumably because the daughter they had also fell pregnant at a really young age. Dang, that's one young gramps. The one that comes to mind forced his ex at gunpoint into his car and then drove to another state. Cops eventually caught up with him and then he shot himself in the car. I feel really bad for the girl. Ouch. We had a couple, myself included. I think there was about 8 in total. I'm all that's left. The rest are dead or incarcerated. I hope you're doing well for yourself. Came from a bad group myself and am now making things better for myself. She was a bit of a goth. Smoked in front of the school. Smoked pot behind the gym. Graduated valedictorian, went to Stanford on a full ride scholarship. Apparently, just looking at Facebook, he's now a nerdy hipster who frequently donates to various charities. In high school, he was a scene metal kid who had a penchant for beating up his many girlfriends. Not sure how this happened, but there were three bad boys on our football team, all players and all very good looking. They cast, drank, smoked all the time and were constantly getting laid, or at least telling everyone they were. Right around senior year college they each went through some change and are all now born again Christians. No partying, less cussing, and none of them talk about women in an objectifying way. It's great but kinda unnerving in a way. I was a bad girl. I was very academically gifted, but had a bad home life. So I smoked, cigarettes and weed, drank a fair bit of vodka. 
basically did everything I could to rebel against authority. I once threw a har of blood on the principal. Animal blood. Long story. Ended up getting kicked out. Spent two years on the streets with a bad drug habit and surviving through sex work. Had a massive OD turned my life around. Worked in transport logistics. Now at 30 I'm at university. Studying computer science engineering. I'll be 34 when I graduate. Glad to hear you turned your life around. All the best luck to you sis. Not quite the bad boy. Actually everyone thought he was goody two shoes. Turns out he had some of the worst grades in school. Was a serial arsonist. And when he was caught attempted suicide. Haven't heard from him since but he made the news with one of his fires colon. Which one? One became a serial killer. My wife dated him before all that. One's doing life for a contract killing. Three are dead. They were bangers. Two are in mental wards. I was a hood. Banger back in the late 80s early 90s. Grew up in New Mexico. There were very few of us that became productive members of society. I got caught for B&E. Judge gave me a choice. Jail or job core. I took the latter. Met my wife shortly after. And she taught me what it means to be a real man. Father. Human being. I love this one. One bad boy died of a drug overdose in his 20s, leaving a 4 year old son behind. Yet another bad boy moved to the USA, raped at least one 14 year old girl, and has been in prison there for years. One bad boy and one bad girl became pregnant in grade 12 and married the weekend after graduation. They are still together and are fine. Upstanding citizens from everything I've heard. Happy ending. I like the stories where they turn their life around and learn from their mistakes. He's dead. Was always a hothead. Not after spending 3 years in prison. Broken jaw. Shot multiple times etc. He was just bad news. He threatened to bomb the school then posted multiple videos on YouTube of him beating freaking the family dog and he kinda disappeared once the police were involved, which was quick. I'm sure he went to a mental wellness facility and I hope he got better because earlier that year he tried starting a fire in the school cafeteria. The dude needed a lot of help, but this was about 10 years ago. That fricked the dog part made me feel strange. What the frick? I know y'all are not going to believe this one, but the bad boy super jack dude, dude Ebra, blonde blue eyes jock that got all the women. Well, he's doing gay pee at a professional level these days. So there's that. He's doing fine though. The bad girl that everyone was in love with. Not me at the time though. She turned out to be a very sweet person with an abusive dad and that made her be so rebellious and edgy back in high school. Well. She um. She's my ex-wife now. So there's that. She's doing fine though. That escalated quickly. I guess I was bad boy in high school. Two of the girls I dated called me their bad boy phase years later. I thought I was so bad too because I didn't give a crap about anything and broke every rule I thought was stupid. Then I got sent to a school filled with kids way worse than me. My graduating class was around 20, I think. I maintained the same attitude about everything but somehow graduated. I was considered a good kid in that school because I did half my schoolwork and I wasn't shooting up or partying every weekend. Anyway, now I'm closing in on 30. I have a good job. 65k a year, quite a bit in the shithole city I live in, and just bought my dream car. I'm currently sitting on my couch, typing this in an awkward position because my cat decided to go to sleep right where my arm would go. Sorry if that was poorly written. I just did shots with my grandmother over Skype for her birthday. She dropped out of school to travel the world with her, suspected, pimp. She has since gotten her get and is now studying business at some university in Las Vegas. I had a few of them. Some of them are really crazy but one of them seems to have calmed down a bit and I hope he's doing well in life because he kind of deserves some good luck emo. He's a DJ in a nightclub and is a good friend of mine. I used to do his homework and he'd buy me lunch. I managed to get him in my study group so he didn't bully us. But he'd spend most of his time drunk or with girls or getting into fights. He is a good friend of mine as well as the other nerds of the group now. We were in a reunion celebrating 10 years of our graduation like 2 years ago and he invited us to the nightclub where he works and I hated the music but everyone seemed to like it. He got divorced last year though. Not nice. But he's got his crap together so we all cheer him up. 
finally something positive. My school's bad boy girl never got traction, but the butthole popular guy is now overweight and balding, and recently hit on my at the gym. I was an awkward band kid, and grew into a very pretty lady. Frick you, Chad. For real, his name is Chad. I'll never understand how parents will look at their newborn child in the eyes and say my beautiful Chad, much less tell their family this is my adorable Chad. Bad boy is now manning the front desk of the local dry cleaner. Bad girl got married, got divorced and is desperately trying to get married again but, everyone is taking a bite, but nobody is buying. Well the school S is now a nurse in Austin, TX, she did well for herself. As for the bad boy, he is still in law school at the University of Virginia. I just realized that I'm nowhere near as successful as them and I feel sad now. I mean, if you're happy with what you're doing, there's no reason to be sad. It's got a competition and none of us are getting out of here alive no matter what our job titles or how successful we are. And if you're not happy with what you're doing, well, it's never too late work on that. He got a girlfriend, girlfriend dumped him because he got into too much trouble, then started a gang that said no to relationships until they get to high school. I think it's hilarious. We had a few criminals and crap heads and for the most part they turned out the way you'd imagine, but in terms of bad boys, there was one guy who you could say fit the mold. He never followed the rules, always but heads with authority, smoked weed every morning before school, got a full tattoo sleeve by 16 but for the most part was kinda well liked by his peers. He ended up dropping out of school, getting kicked out of his parents house and selling weed while being homeless. After that he got heavily involved in a local church and did a complete 180 that shocked everyone. We're talking complete sobriety, mellow attitude, and getting his ged. He continued to be involved in the church, at one point tried going down to Mexico to help build a church for a small village. He ended up starting his own construction company which ended up going under and when I last talked to him a few months ago he told me he was working as a project manager. Our local bad girl is actually my neighbor. During her last two years of high school both her parents passed away from vastly different illnesses. She shut herself away for a while after. Now she can't keep her job to support herself because she's still permanently trapped in that bad girl attitude from how much they spoiled her that she has to rely on her brother two states over to pay for her food and apartment. One of them became an accountant. I met him on a train to the city a few years after school. Well dressed, quiet, and serious. Went to private school so our version of a bad girl was also the class president. But anyhow, onto the story. A few years ago I receive a message from a friend with a newspaper article. This girl got arrested for running an underground sex ring. She would find and lure in young teenager girls, drug them and then her and her boyfriend would rape the girls. They held parties where all this went down. Apparently they were part of a whole group of people. Then the two fled the country after they plead guilty. They were eventually found on a farm where they were working as farm hands. Now I can't find any stories to say what happened, but if I remember correctly my friend told me she was deported. The group he was in got into a car crash killing one of them. He was the one driving but the oldest one took the blame. The poor girl almost was paralyzed at the waist down and still took the blame for him because he just got his license. They all have almost fully healed since then. It's been a year or so. He is still trying to live as a musician, but in reality being sustained by his father mother and living with them. She got pregnant with 17, did not finish school, had the baby, went back to school, and finished it. Her family sustains her and the baby since the father disappeared. She struggles with raising the kid, trying to go to parties and work, earning less than the cost for education food for the kid alone. They are both over 30 now, all this from social media. My best friend was the school bad girl, dated guys in their 20s when she was in high school, did drugs, did not deal well with authority, etc. She's had her ups and downs, like getting arrested during her third wedding, but now she's in law school in Hawaii. I didn't find out until well into high school it was me. I started going to private school freshman year and got ghosted by my friends. 
Had no idea why, but at a party in our town. I rarely went to parties. I saw one and asked what the deal was. Apparently, his mom called all of our friends' moms and told them I was a bad influence and I needed to be excluded from hanging out with them. So one mom cost me 95% of my childhood friends. So, I'm well, married, no kids, no plan on having kids, own a home, work in advertising, didn't finish college, but didn't need to. I stay fit, my wife is beautiful, we're healthy, and happy. As for the friends, two dead from odds, one cashier at a liquor store who lives with his parents. One moved to Germany to be a European homeless person. One convicted of sexual assault. One pizza delivery driver addict. One just disappeared at around 17. I guess his father worked in the state government and when he was busted with drugs they just sent him away. No social media or contact with anyone. At one point I asked his sister and she just said she didn't want to talk about it. He could literally be dead and we'd never know. One was an internet pioneer, in that, before he was 20 he was facing federal trafficking charges for selling drugs online, and that about covers it. So it's clear to everyone I was the problem. He's addicted to fentanyl now. He's facing charges for beating his mom up for not giving him money so he'll be going away for a while. I used to be best friends with the bad boys in grade school then we entered high school. We started drifting apart after being placed in different sections but all in the same grade. One is a registered nurse with a family of his own now. Married a doctor and they just had a baby. He's a frontliner for our city's regional hospital that cater to COVID-19 patients. Bless him. One became a dad too early. Got fat. Took his sweet time to graduate from college and he barely did graduate. But he's wiser now and we're happy he's on the right track. The other one was a drug addict when we entered college and last I heard he's still one. No one's seen him since 2016. I'm hoping he's okay. We had a couple of them where I lived. One found a girlfriend that rescued him from his bad habits. I knew her in passing. And he's really lucky to be dating her. The second dropped out of a crappy college, went through rehab, got his life together, and is, last I heard, back in school learning. The third was the cliche bad ending, abandoned the other two, got arrested a couple of times for drugs and petty theft, and I haven't heard of him since. I would not consider myself a bad boy myself but I was hanging around with that group of friends anyway. One of them is once again sent into a rehab home due to drug addiction for like the fifth time. Another working his butt off on the weeks, partying and doing coke on the weekends. Last time I spoke with one of the girls, seems like she pretty much just isolate herself at home with the rent paid by her mom. Everyone else that was a part of this group has moved away from here and I have no idea how they are doing nowadays but I hope and I guess they are doing fine as they've apparently felt done here. I do know one of them has a child. What happened to the prettiest most popular girl after high school? She's working at American National. She was a total B in school but she's been really nice every time I've seen her since. Funny how it works out like that sometimes. There was a guy a year above me who was almost a comically stereotypical butthole jock in high school. I ended up at the same college as him and we kind of randomly were in the same extended group of friends. He turned into a pretty good guy and we ended up pretty good friends by the time we graduated. Our popular girl was co-head cheerleader, homecoming queen, and an honor student. In the top 25 out of a graduating class of about 400, she is now a physician. Some people just have it all. Got hotter. Got a doctorate. Travels the world curing AIDS in third world countries with her equally hot fiancé. We had sort of a group of popular girls, and they were all pretty nice, smart people. One works for Snapchat, another works for an international NGO and is pretty much constantly traveling to developing countries. One's a music teacher, and another one is going to medical school. For a while I had that whole like everyone in my school is so dumb and shallow and I'm real and cool attitude that I think some people tend to get when they're insecure and already really different, and need to cope with it in one way or another. But at my 5 year reunion I went to on a whim, I realized that so many people I wrote off in high school because they were popular and I wasn't were really interesting, nice people. She was voted best looking and married the guy who was voted best looking, that was 34 years ago, still married, still good looking, 
and all around good people. Did some modeling, got fake boobs, worked on a mine site for several years driving heavy machinery and pulling in the big bucks. Got featured on a reality TV show about FIFO, fly in fly out, miners. A few news articles picked up her story with her modeling past, eventually got a small feature on the Playboy website. Most recently was on another reality show, this time a dating show where she was quite successful. That is a sharp pivot in career choice. One of the most popular girls at my school got pregnant during our senior year by the guy she'd been dating since the 7th grade. Against all odds she is on her way to becoming a teacher with a 3 year old daughter and is still with her middle school sweetheart. She and her boyfriend are being charged with the murder of an elderly man. There's currently a warrant out for her arrest, but it's been months and they haven't found her. Last I saw, she was panhandling on the street. She was popular in HS, made the front page of the town paper for graduation, super smart in university. During college, she developed schizophrenia. She was in and out of the psych ward a lot, heard from my mom, who knew her mom. She was an absolute terror all of a sudden, wasn't responding to medication well, and was turning to drugs. That's really sad. She's still trying to get over her ex-boyfriend that was 5 years older than her. She's broke, obtained her associates, and now trying to get into a university's nursing program. Luckily, she has an ugly wealthy boyfriend that can support her while she pursues her education. Source, I'm the ugly wealthy boyfriend. Dat plot twist. She was a ballerina who posted selfies to FB all the time. They stopped suddenly about a month ago. Now I'm seeing a bunch of RIP posts to her wall. I'm guessing not great. Not 6 months after graduation, she was convicted for organizing collaborating her boyfriend's armed robbery of the local Burger King where she worked. You could say that she was a real knockout. Well she's Emily Ratajkowski, so I guess she's doing pretty well. She came out as a lesbian, married her partner and they had a baby last year, I assume artificial insemination. She was always not only beautiful and athletic, but super sweet and friendly, even to a big nerd like me, deserves all good things that come her way. I think your assumptions are possible. She got married to a dude that's actually pretty average looking, but tall as frick. I'm pretty sure he's at least 6 feet 7 inches. She immediately had a baby and started doing what she did in high school. Photography and being pretty and personable to get exclusive access to events that people want photographed. Backstage at concerts, footy events, festivals, political stuff, etc. She's usually a nice girl. I won't lie and tell you that she was nicer than average, because she wasn't. She was just way prettier than average. One statewide beauty pageants a couple of times, and fairly smart, so she successfully leveraged her good looks to get exactly what she wanted in life. Which is a cute kid, a husband that makes money and worships her, and a fat paycheck for maybe 15 hours of work a week. If she was stupid or meaner, she wouldn't have been half as successful. She also still looks exactly like she did in high school, just with better makeup, which helps. The rest of us just got older and fatter. We're friends, if it matters. She had a lot of issues in high school, lots of family baggage. I think that's why she wanted to create a picture perfect happy ending for herself so badly. I wasn't exactly a slouch myself in the popularity department in high school, so we ran in the same circles. I went to school with Kite Upton, the Miss South Carolina Teen USA contestant who said the whole US Americans, like such as, thing a few years ago, she was really sweet. Actually, she was never exactly bright, but she was always nice and helpful to everyone. As far as I know she went on to do some TV shows, modeling, and she is a real estate agent now. For a moment I thought you meant Kate Upton. My school didn't really have one of those even though there were about 1000 people in my high school, as it was too hippied out. There was one group who dressed and looked like the popular kids, but nobody really liked them and they weren't ever really invited to any parties. Same with my current high school, the most popular kids are the funny kids who are pretty nice to everyone. To be fair, it is an arts based school, we're all gay or fricked up in some way. 
she was quite nice and dated the handsome football star. After high school she got implants and became the trophy girlfriend for the football star who now plays in the NFL. He was also a pretty nice guy, so I'm glad he's been successful because he was too dumb for anything else. That was the nicest, kindest way to absolutely bomb someone I have ever heard. Good sir. Every reasonably attractive girl I went to school with finished college and is now gainfully employed and most of them live on their own or are on their way to doing so. Nothing exciting. Well I don't know if she finally graduated high school this year or not but I don't know the details. Basically, she's one of those promo girls for a nightclub, has had multiple nudes leaked, and has supposedly had sex with her sugar daddy, who is also her ex-stepfather, for a boob job and some lip injections. There are so many levels of messed up right here. She's still super hot. I saw her at the grocery store last week and she's like 8 months pregnant. Hottest pregnant chick I've ever seen. Lucky guy whoever he is. I wouldn't have pulled out either. Smart man. Lock that crap down. About to graduate med school. Still drop dead gorgeous. And recently engaged to a fellow student. Also contacts me semi regularly to say hi and see what I'm up to and congratulate me on anything important in my life. B. She's had a good life. The kind of life she wanted. A happy marriage. A job she loves. Active in her church. And her kids grew up to be getting a good start in their own lives. She was not only popular and beautiful, but very friendly and kind. She still looks great too. This is going to sound like the most anti-climatic humblebrag ever, but the most popular girl in my high school was me. I was the cheer captain, homecoming and prom queen, voted friendliest best dressed and most likely to become a supermodel in the school. I graduated, went to college for a year and dropped out due to mental health issues, depression and anxiety. I now work in sales and marketing at a cable company. I live with my boyfriend and that's about it. I'm pretty happy, I guess. I quit wearing makeup or doing my hair fancy every day and deleted all social media. Well good on you for that. You keep doing you. I saw her at a steak and shake a couple years ago. Took me a few minutes to figure out who she was because she looked so familiar. She had gotten super fat, almost beyond recognition, and was yelling at a bunch of kids who turned out to be her own. It was satisfying. She was, and apparently still is, a huge bee. Some might say she grew into a bigger bee. I attended my HS 30 year reunion, mainly to show off my beautiful wife. In HS I was the absolute loser with girls. In particular there was this one gorgeous cheerleader whose legs would make a guy salivate. She openly ridiculed me, once I think due to the color of my socks. We had way too many classes together. Anyway at this 30 year reunion, this former cheerleader sits down next to me and starts talking to me like I am a long lost friend. I play along but dang, time has not been kind to this woman. If I were single I would not be interested at all. Moral of the story, some people peak in high school. You do not want to be one of those people. But I haven't even begun to peak. I was the prom queen my senior year and had tons of friends. Lost my scholarship. Dropped out after a year of aimless community college with zero debt and zero skills. Did nothing for three years. Made new friends. And got a job cashiering at Walmart. It's not that bad. We get an hour for lunch. Well, they say the happiest people in life are not those that have everything. But those that can find happiness in what they innately or already have. There was definitely a most popular girl in my school. I wouldn't call her the prettiest but her personality made her very much sought after by just about every guy. I went to a pretty diverse school and she was nice to everyone. We graduated and she goes on to a great school but parties too much and gets kicked out. A couple months ago she died of a drug overdose at a party. It truly was tragic because she was a great person. She received a full ride to an Ivy League school, got pregnant the summer between high school and college, had the kid, baby's father, a college senior left her high and dry, she became a huge druggie, her subsequent kids got taken away from her, she's been in rehab a few times, and she's now super fat, sadly she's done nothing with her life and she posts about her idiocy drama on Facebook constantly, you're a 34 year old woman Megan, get your crap together. One mistake, that's all it takes to freak up your whole life. 
There were twin sisters who were extremely popular and pretty. Very snobby. So not anyone I'd interact with. I was definitely part of the weird crowd. When I saw them at our 20th reunion, they were each easily over 200 pounds or just over 5 feet tall. They were wearing skin tight low cut tops, skin tight mini skirts, with wide belts wrapped loosely around the middle. They were very vivacious, having a good time, but really not dressed well. I still don't understand it, because they didn't dress riskily in HS. It was really weird. She's a life coach. She has about 3-4 thousand Facebook friends. Her Facebook photos are 90% close up selfies of herself and the same 3 friends smooshing their painted faces against each other. She is incredibly over enthusiastic about the most average of things. Overall she's not evil or anything, but she is very full of herself and very shallow. Sounds like she's as basic as they come. I saw her in the metro in Montreal with an older lady who was trying to explain the employee's manual of a major bank to her. No you don't have to read the whole thing. Just if you have questions you look the answers up. With the index. At the front of the book. No. I don't know what your questions are. No. I don't know what the answers to the questions you don't even have yet are. It's a book. If you can't operate a book I am not sure I can help you. Her teeth still look fabulous though. She got hit by a car and was never the same. Heartbreaking. Honestly. Even for those that didn't like her. No one wanted to see that. One day she's the prom queen and the next she's in a wheelchair. Can't speak. Limited mobility and is with the developmentally disabled students. It was rough for everyone to see. I feel completely horrible because for a good second I thought you were talking Regina George from Mean Girls. Class of 97. She went to Brown. Then Harvard. She got a job at Goldman Sachs. She made it out of the collapse a millionaire. She didn't come to the 10 year reunion but her Facebook indicates she lives in France. Doesn't work anymore and just takes care of her kids. Her husband seems to be involved with the movie business somehow. It's not clear. She married a rich guy. Rich guy is the most genuine, down to earth person I know. She was the classic full of herself student in school just passing by with less than average grades. Apparently, she has bald patches now because she started pulling strands of her hair out. The class hottie popular girl happened to be my bully so I kept tabs on her via social media after high school. She's the baby mama to two little boys from two different dads, both dads who have mysteriously vanished. She worked briefly at her donut shop but quit after a month and has been on welfare since the first kid was born. She got fat as frick, and lives in a dirty trailer, wastes money on drugs, begs her high school friends for money to help her buy her kids clothes, and isn't willing to learn how to drive a car so she mooches rides off everyone who knows her. Lost her scholarship, got pregnant, dropped out of community college, and deleted all her social media profiles. Satisfying after all the bullying. Both of them are continuing to be pretty and popular in college. Not surprising really, that's what they're good at. One's doing chemical engineering, I think the other is in some fine art program. Both have quite attractive boyfriends as well, although I'm 80% sure the engineer one is cheating on her boyfriend with another girl. She's becoming a doctor, and we still chat frequently. I work as a mental health care professional and we often discuss fake case studies, treatment plans, and the resources our different communities have. She's a lovely gal who hasn't been able to settle down with anyone, has mentioned it's a bummer, but she copes well, she runs marathons for fun, is a total babe still, and very nice. Depends on who was the prettiest, of the two that people generally agreed on. One became Miss USA, and the other is an actress model who seems to be doing well for herself. They were both good people in high school, and they're probably still good people now. Her profile came up on FB recently. I clicked on her profile pic to see she has got fat. She used to make fun of me for being chubby. I get the last laugh Sarah, you fat C. She got huge off and married a fat dude. They have built a very happy family with kids over the past few years. They are kind of my go to jolly fat people on Facebook. She killed herself. One year after her younger sister, also the prettiest, most popular girl of her year, fell through ice and drowned. Absolutely horrible. She was a very nice person. 
I know this sounds weird and vain but I was this girl in a school of 130 kids grade 7 12 in a rural area. I had moved there from overseas, I was well traveled and came from a cosmopolitan area and seemed exotic so I kinda attracted a lot of the guys and was that popular girl. In fact all of my friends were the guys in my grade and I didn't really have many female friends due to a constant smear campaign that I was a majoress although I didn't lose my virginity until I was 18. I just enjoyed the company of the guys more than the girls because we had more common interests. So after graduation I worked in a restaurant in town over the summer to save up for university and toward the end of summer we had a few going away parties. During one of these parties I got far too drunk on cheap wine and one of my friends offered to drive me home. I found myself the victim of sexual assault at the hands of one of my closest friends. I guess he was annoyed that he had been such a friend to me and never received any kind of sexual validation for his efforts. I reported the assault to the police as I had enough evidence to press charges. Bruises on my neck. Didn't shower afterwards. Eyewitnesses to say he took me home while I was severely intoxicated. But because the town was very small, word got out. My social worker for the case literally told me OJ's mother must be devastated and the word that went around town was that I was lying. I lost all of my friends and I was ostracized from my social group. I left town to go to university and manage one year with fabulous grades before I lost 40 pounds and had a major mental breakdown that landed me in the psych ward with a diagnosis of PTSD and major depressive disorder. I then dropped out of school. I also couldn't hold down employment due to constant flashbacks of the assault, panic attacks, etc. I lost my job too. To this day, 5 years later, I am a chronic job hopper. I live in a squad type situation with 5 other street punks and I am in a relationship with a very frightening man because he makes me feel safe and takes care of me where I now seem to be unable to take care of myself. If I could just go back in time. I wouldn't have pressed charges or told anyone about the assault. That way I would still be welcome in the town I made home. Still have my social circle of successful peers. Still be just me. And I might not have crumbled and fell apart so much. I realize this is a major ramble but I'm currently day drunk. My bad. Sorry for bumming you guys out. Well I went to Catholic school. Don't worry. I'm safely lapsed now. And the prettiest girl in our school went to college. Got a degree, worked about 6 months, then got married to some older, accountant, looking dude and is currently up to 4 kids and counting. Her entire Facebook feed is pictures of her kids doing various Catholic school type stuff like first communion, Christmas plays, and anti-abortion letter writing campaigns. Sometimes she's in the pictures too. She looks a little bit haggard on occasion but she does appear to love her little squad of offspring very much a little squad of offspring. We call those families. I went to a weird school where the cheerleaders were all considered dumb s and the popular kids were smart and in band. So the popular girls went on to be very successful. I know my homecoming queen got a free ride to Harvard and moved to New York. Ex teachers professors of reddit. What was your frick this moment? A female student I had disciplinary issues with accused me of hitting on her and making obscene gestures towards her. I'm an openly gay man and most of the staff knew this yet the district still put me on suspension while they investigated. They were able to prove she was lying but the district decided that the best course of action was to transfer me to another school instead of, you know, punishing the student. I quit at the end of the school year and got a job in banking. Dang. That is fricked up. A student had a mental breakdown in the library, smashed a wooden chair, and gouged a pencil in his arm while screaming that he wanted us all to go away, and I got dreamed out for not calling campus security before I called 911. I know you got dreamed out, but thank you for calling 911 and not campus security. Most will not do anything. You probably saved that kid. I had a student that copied off another kid during a test. I gave him a 0%. The parents came in to complain to administration that, since I hadn't explicitly said during the first day orientation that cheating wasn't allowed, it was an unfair punishment. Administration forced me to allow him an opportunity to retake the test. He never retook the test, and the grade of zero stood. Still, I was so disillusioned by the entire experience that I started looking the next day at college programs that I could use to transition away from public education. 
proof that some that go into administration are wholly unfit. Like it has to be explained that cheating is bad. Two weeks into my first year teaching 9th grade math I had a girl attack another girl for no reason in my class. She was grabbing onto her hair really tightly and I was trying to break it up. Another student tried to help me out and somehow the instigating student managed to punch him in the face and give him a bloody nose while still holding onto the other student's hair. Now what makes this story relevant is I literally said the words frick this while trying to break up the fight. Not loud. Not to a student. But just like frick this this I am not gonna let this happen in my class right now. Well, the instigating student decided to tell the principal that I was cursing at her. Despite the other students in the class supporting me and the fact that this student had a history of violence, I got a letter in my permanent file saying I had used inappropriate language towards a student. Frick that. Teaching taught me a lot but I couldn't do it for more than a couple years. Really respect those that make it their career. Schools alike. Kids fighting for no reason. No fricks given. Teacher whispers a cuss word while trying to stop that fight. WTFFF. How fricking dare you frick your career. When the principal told me one of my students mother was getting her secondary education certification so she could move up to teach HS. Math. Where her son was. So they wouldn't be renewing my contract to teach the following year. But, they were in need of a network administrator for the school district, and they were willing to pay me a teacher's 25k salary to do it, and I would be answering to each building principal, like a janitor, not to the superintendent, like a district, level admin. So they moved you from teaching kids to teaching servers. Going through my frick this moment right now. Been in special education since 2007. District I work in desperately wants teachers to start new classrooms due to overcrowding yet they don't want to hire the right people. They'd rather hire fellow locals from high school in the area who the admins know versus hiring qualified people from the outside. Our special education admin has zero spec ed experience and his replacement also has no spec ed experience. Not fun at all. The principal's niece made a B in my freshman geography class and she wanted me to bump it to an A. Because the child could not get into Texas A&M with a B in a freshman class on her record. This school also pressured teachers to fail no students. End of year assessing students to see who'd progress through to the second year. While assessing the work the department head came in and said we had to fail X amount due to facilities and resources for the next year. He then returned an hour later and said that due to the budget we actually needed to pass a higher number than originally thought. I completely ignored what he said and carried on marking on merit but it was the proverbial straw. When admin wouldn't let me take more than 4 days off after a close friend died unexpectedly. You're letting the kids down is a phrase I heard over and over again as I tried to reason with them. My girlfriend died. You're letting the kids down. I'm in the hospital. You're letting the kids down. I have terminal cancer and am bedridden. You're letting the kids down. Looks at your gravestone. You're letting the kids down. I failed a college student who never came to class and missed both the midterm and final exams. The influential parents complained to the school. The administration later went into the digital records and changed the fail to a passing grade without my knowledge. I found it out later. Third hand. Ergo, I refused to sign a second year contract they offered to me. That kind of thing can cause a school to lose its accreditation if reported. Caught a student cheating. But, stupid cheating. Cheated off of someone else with the wrong answers and the same wrong spelling. When I spoke to him regarding taking a new test, generous on my part considering it should have been a zero per school policy, he refused and said I would be hearing from his parents. I, of course, did hear from them via my principal within an hour. Go to love kids and their phones readily available. Fast forward to a meeting with the student parents and principal i had his test and the one from which he cheated upon showing this to the parents i fully expected them to understand and hold their son accountable nope instead the parents demanded an apology from me for branding their son a cheater which would negatively impact him for the rest of his life and also it's the least i could do since they were paying my salary when i said i would not apologize for catching their son cheating the father then said i was lucky i was a woman because otherwise he would punch me in the face nice so yeah good times glad i got my master's degree for that
Give me what I want or I will physically harm you. And the pattern continues with their son. When the prestigious high school I was working at focused on sports more than academics. On top of that, it turned out that the principal overrode teachers marks if they tried giving students a failing grade. Frick that. I was teaching middle school English while overseas in Europe when two students, a boy and a girl began viciously fighting after the boy made comments about the girl's mother. For most people, this would be easy to break up, but as a 5 feet 5 inches man lit, both the 13 year old kids had several inches and pounds on me, when I positioned myself in between them. They took a break from fighting each other to work as a team to push me over a desk. They then promptly resumed punching each other's lights out. I quit that week. When I positioned myself in between them, they took a break from fighting each other to work as a team to push me over a desk. At least you got them to work together instead of against each other for a second. That's an all around crap situation though. My mom retired as a special education teacher after a student bit her hard enough to draw blood. She had to get a ton of tests for everything from hepatitis to freaking rabies. She was fine. Thankfully, but that was when she decided that she'd had enough. She went on to sub for non-special ed kids and eventually, to do administrative work at a charity for ASD individuals. I feel for your mom. I worked at Target as one of their renter cops and got bit by someone we were restraining. It broke the skin. They sent me to the doctors and had to get a litany of tests. It's not fun kid poured gasoline under the door of my room, after hours, and lit it, burning most of the room. The facility guys worked all weekend to clean it up and paint it, hauling in new desks to replace those burned. Not long after that, I found out I could make more money with less hassle by waiting tables at the beach. Plus the beach has women in bikinis. I was gone a week later. You haven't studied for the test tomorrow. Do you? A. Pretend to be sick and stay home to study. B. Guess the answers on the test. Comma C. Burn down the entire freaking classroom. Was substituting at a low income middle school for the day. About 40 students per class. Just had a simple worksheet for them to work on every hour rotation. Spent the day breaking up fist fights. Chairs or desks being thrown across the room. Students having screaming matches. Students climbing and dancing on desks. Students just leaving class during the chaos. I had 6 students turn in the completed worksheet for an entire day of class rotations. I realized I was no longer a teacher but a prison guard with less benefits and no way to defend myself. I guarantee 80% of these kids will end up dead or in prison before the age of 25. Never again. Another one that resonated with me. Glad I'm out. So I was at a TAE for a college course, Introduction to Information Assurance. One of the labs for the class involved performing a SQL injection. If you don't know what that means, just know that you have to build your input string carefully. The attack required a very specific input. Well this one student was getting frustrated and asked for some help. After looking at his input string, I realized he had it just right. Except he was missing a terminator on part of the input. Semicolons. Am I right? I pointed out the simple mistake and he didn't take it well. He smashed his own face on the keyboard, logged off the machine, thanked me, and left the class. I knew this level of teaching wasn't for me. I don't know what he's been up to, but I can't imagine a co-worker responding to bugs like that. Forgetting a semicolon can do that to you. I was a high school teacher with 7 years experience in my district and a master's degree. I was making 49 dollars k. This was 2013. I was talking to a friend who was in from out of town. This friend had barely made it through his bachelor's degree, even with a lot of help from him and other friends. Over dinner he was complaining about not getting a good enough raise, so he was only making 143 dollars k at his software consulting job. He didn't do the technical stuff, more customer relations. I left teaching to make more money, I am, but it has taken a while, and I really miss working with the kids. Wish I had stayed in teaching, edit, to be clear, I don't begrudge my friend a penny, good for people who do well. During my student teaching, I was at parent teacher conferences, I was speaking to a parent whose son was failing, mostly because he did none of his homework. She was angry with me and pretty much told me it was my fault. She asked me why I wasn't making sure he did his homework, 
I said, it is homework, meaning work you do at home. It is your responsibility to help him and make sure he does it. She complained about me to the teacher I was student teaching for. He warned me that teaching is very political and that parents can keep you from getting tenure or get you fired. Other teachers told me that this was the climate nowadays. Children are not held accountable and parents blame you for their lack of parenting skills. I decided that it was not worth it to finish the teaching program so I finished early with a degree in history and policy. The subjects I would have taught history and the social studies are ex. My degree is pretty much useless but I still make more than a teacher does. I dropped from the teaching program and went ahead with a history degree. Also, I just tell people I majored in trivial pursuit. I work and teach in higher ed. I still teach online and had a student a few semesters ago who did hardly any work but asked for an exemption from all the work she didn't do. I had to reply and confirm she was asking to get a passing grade for doing no work because either I was just reading it wrong. There's an amazing amount of student entitlement that I didn't see 10 years ago. Sort of like I pay for a passing grade in this course instead of I pay for access to college level content. I think all the really great free resources online have changed the way they look at learning and we haven't kept up. A bit off topic. But I've recently been spending time at my kid's elementary school setting him up with an IEP. Just working with the staff and watching how fast paced it is really surprised me. I'd be in a meeting and suddenly a walkie would go off and they'd have to go out and handle a student issue and then come back to me. And that switching gears process is non-stop. And this might just be because I live in a relatively small town. But it seems like every teacher and staff member knows every kid's name and really seems to care. After spending years working with doctors trying to help my kid, it's the people at his school who've dramatically changed his, and our, life in just a few months. I know I couldn't do the work they do and we will be forever indebted to them for their intervention. I told this story last year, so you may have heard it. I was subbing for a class that integrated some of the special education students for 2 hours a day. We were having a holiday party, so the kids got to push their desks together and have snacks and watch a movie. I'm sitting at the desk grading papers when I hear the class getting kind of noisy. I ask what's going on and someone mentions that Trevor doesn't like this part of the movie. Trevor is a 12 year old boy on the autism spectrum. He's a very large boy, about 6 feet 0 and well over 200 pounds. I tell Trevor to come on over to my desk and he does. He says he doesn't like when people sing in movies and starts covering his ears. I tell him I will fast forward this part and he flips his crap. Apparently, he hates fast forwarding more than he hates singing in movies. He picks up a desk and whips it against the wall near a set of windows. Flips over every desk he can get his hand on all while screaming like someone is attacking him. He's just trashing the room and starts going after the kids. I yell for one of the kids to run and get his main teacher and another to get the principal. But Trevor pushes a few kids hard enough to make them fall down and then grabs a girl by throat and starts choking her. He has a look on his face of a madman and he's sweating profusely and turning red while this girl is trying to fight him off. I get over there and am able to pry his hands off with the help of a few students. Trevor then turns to me and in a crazy, deep voice says I will find your house and hide under your bed until you come home. I will rape and murder you and laugh while I'm doing it. His teacher came in and was able to pull him away and Trevor just stared at me the entire way out laughing like crazy. It was scary as frick. I was an adjunct, at the bottom of the totem pole, and got my class assignments last and only if the more senior people everyone had gotten their minimum number of classes. They'd hold off on this until the literal last minute, and I'd find out if I was teaching 3 days before the semester started. For the last 2 or 3 years, I was only teaching online and only in the summer. During that time I moved away and started a business, so it was all fine with me. The last summer, I got two classes I'd never taught before with about a month before they started. I had to learn a totally new subject for one, and remember stuff I hadn't looked at since grad school for the other. They almost took one class away from me after I'd busted my butt to prepare for it, because nobody else's classes were filling up. The other class had 6 people in it. I was told I could teach it prorated, for 6 stroke 11 of the usual rate, and I refused. I didn't have time to learn that stuff teach two classes, and keep my business going. I was told I could teach it prorated, for 6 stroke 11 of the usual rate, 
and I refused, even for adjuncting. This is a new level of shitbaggery. You don't teach less just because there are fewer students in the class. My wife is a teacher. She started in the UK public sector, but left after 8 years. After a few months break, she went into private education. There wasn't any one thing that led her to quit. It was working in a system that, over 8 years, saw 3 curriculum changes, 2 exam changes, and 3 changes to the inspection process. A system that demanded more and more from the staff while cutting funding and freezing pay. Where she'd get to work at 7am, and leave at 6pm, do some work at home, and spend almost every Sunday marking or planning or both, just to keep afloat. A system that was constantly narrowing its scope and becoming ever more inflexible to the detriment of the children she was teaching, where her choice was either to teach her students to pass the exam, but deprive them of useful mathematical knowledge and critical thinking skills, or to teach them these skills, but run the risk of them doing poorly in their exams. This would jeopardize not only those kids, but future pupils as well, because poor exam results would bring the school's rating down, leaving it open to being taken over by an academy chain which would be even worse. It was a system that took an enthusiastic and excellent teacher, ground her down and stretched her so thin she basically had a breakdown and almost left teaching forever. I am the version of your wife who left teaching forever. Every single thing you've written, these are my exact reasons. I didn't make 8 years though. I didn't even finish my NQT. I've been making minimum wage ever since and I never regret it. My wife got contacted about applying for a job out of state. I encourage her to do so. My thoughts were I have a year and a half of teaching experience and a master's degree in teaching from an R1 research institution. This will be easy. It was not easy. I was told I could not teach in the subject that I was fully certified and held a degree in my current state, despite reading stories about shortages and emergency certifications in my field. But I could probably make it work in another field if I took 6-7 classes. I now work another job that I don't really like though I can get those 6-7 classes for mostly free if I want them. The problem is starting over as a teacher, again, would be a decent sized pay cut, and trying to convince myself to deal with the overall low societal respect for teachers is tough when the whole process has just exacerbated my depression for 3 years. I have to. Early in my career, I had students who were plagiarizing lab reports. I turned them in, mostly because I felt I had to the school made a huge freaking deal about cheating and had an academic honesty pledge statement students wrote on every test. One set of parents screamed at me over the phone. Next thing I know, I had a meeting with the vice principal who said they didn't want the cheating to interfere with the student's future and he ripped up all the plagiarism reports I wrote that year. My second time saying frick this was based on the cumulative effects of being unsupported by the school. They changed which courses I was teaching, and the grade level. We had a construction project going on so there was constant noise including beeping and drilling, even when they promised it wouldn't be during the school day, that was a lie, stupid school-wide initiatives, more pointless meetings, incompetent high-ups, it's the adults in the system that make it hard to be a teacher, the kids are generally not the problem. I left during the first month into spring semester at a poor rural high school, it was my first year teaching, went from professional life to teaching through a state program, Absolutely no support from the administration. One class had over 30 students, another had half the class as troublemakers who would not calm down. Had a bomb threat, a gun found on a kid, a student death, and a teacher fired for an inappropriate relationship with a student all before Thanksgiving break. A quarter of the teaching staff was new, two people in my department had already left. Several teachers had already quit, and the interim principal and administration were refusing to help teachers with anything, and actually blamed us. I'm trying to hang on, I'm hating every day of my life, and I'm thinking that all I need to do is make it through one year and I can do something else. Then early February, the principal calls me in and tells me that he thinks that I'm not a good fit, and at the end of the year I will need to go to another school or I will be terminated. In the real world, you don't tell someone you're fired but stay on for a few more months and then expect them to stick around. I was out of there and thankful for it, although it hurt to abandon my fellow teachers and the students. Also, I had one teacher of the month during the fall semester, 
so I couldn't have been that bad. They had done this because I refused to fill out a slip of paper indicating if I would be staying on for next year. This was basically, verbatim, my second year teaching. I left in February and believed I was done with education. Two years later I got a job teaching overseas and love it. Amazing how much admin impacts your life. Good riddance. I caught a kid selling drugs in the hallway and turned him in. He threatened to kill me with an ice pick. He was super unstable and volatile, and had a criminal record, so I didn't doubt that he might try it. The principal refused to remove him from my class because he has the right to have an education. My other students took it upon themselves to escort me through the school in between classes and walk me to my car after school in a big huddle so Ice Pick Boy couldn't get to me. Frick that. It's nice that your other students were nice enough to do that. I started teaching in 2008 when everything went to heck. I skipped student teaching and was hired as an intern, got fabulous reviews, was loved by the kids and admin, and found out mid-March I was being laid off with about 150 other teachers in the district. Got rehired two weeks into the next school year, even though they knew about the position for the entire summer, at a different school. Did great there, got their computer based instruction class up and running while still teaching English, got laid off that March. It broke my heart and they once again offered me another different school that was an absolute heck hole. I left and worked other jobs for years, moved around, enjoyed my 20s, met my now husband and came back to teaching. My old district happily hired me again, and promptly laid me off again. Then hired me on a temporary contract which was illegal but my union was so worried about getting raises that year they didn't care or help. Finally got tenure in that district and ended up getting a job offer at a much better district and left. I've been teaching 7 years and only one of those years I didn't have to completely take down my classroom at the end of the school year. Luckily my new district does everything it can to not have to lay off and I just got my tenure. A kid stabbed himself. On purpose in his hand during a speech. Two things destroyed me. 1. The kid was suspended over a weapons violation. To wit. Hey. Obviously self-destructive kid desperate for attention. Go be alone in your house for a week. And 2. The administration demanded I explain why I hadn't seen this coming. Since he had signed up to do a speech on how to bandage a wound. So clearly his maniacal plan was to shove a small pen knife through his hand while in front of the class. Like you do. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video. Bye for now.